Om Tat Sat. Welcome to Gyan Bhakti. We are currently exploring the scripture Mysticism of Srimad Bhagavatam. Commentary is by my worshipful Guruji, Swami Jyotirmanand Ji Maharaj, narrated by myself, Swami Nikhilanand. So let's get started on today's satsang. We were yesterday discussing Kansa sending a crew to bring Krishna to Mathura and how he saw Krishna's footprints and went into ecstasy. Akrura continued searching for Krishna and Balrama and finally found them in the place where the cows were milked. The moment Akrur saw them, he was overpowered again by profound divine sentiment. Although he was their uncle, Akrura recognized their divinity and fell down at the feet of Krishna and Balrama. Tears flowing from his eyes, Krishna lifted him up and then greeted him. With his hands held by Balrama on one side and Krishna on the other, Akrura was led with honor into the house. Seated at home with Krishna and Balrama and their family, Akrura felt that all his desires had been fulfilled. In response to Krishna's questions about conditions in Mathura, Akrura explained that the atrocities of Kans had increased in enormous proportions and that he even planned to kill Vasudeva, Krishna's actual father. Finally, Akrura told of Kansa's royal command that Nanda, Krishna and Balrama come to Mathura to pay taxation tribute and to enjoy the tournament. The trip planned by Kans to result in Krishna's destruction. That was Kansa's plan. Amused by Kansa's plot and eager to get to Mathura to carry out his divine scheme of destroying Kans, Krishna prepared to leave Vraj. In response to the royal command, Nand immediately proclaimed that the next day all the cowherd men and boys were to prepare their carts, loading them with milk products to carry as an offering to Kans. When the gopis, the cowherdesses, heard Krishna was leaving, they began to grieve about being separated from their supremely beloved Krishna and the whole night they wept. When Krishna heard of their grief, he sent a messenger to tell them that he would come back to them in the future. However, he did not keep that promise physically as we will all see. At the same time, he fulfilled his promise in a more profound way. The gopis became aware of Krishna's presence within their own heart. All this we will see as Krishna's story continues to unfold. Mystically speaking, the foreboding voices that cried out to Kans on Devaki's wedding day, the voice that foretold Kans's death at the hands of Devaki's eighth child, was simply stating a glorious spiritual truth. It is predestined that ignorance or Kans in you, in us, will be destroyed as the divine vision grows brighter and brighter within. All things may or may not be destined, but this is definite. Every soul is destined one day to attain enlightenment and become one with God. How long this will take depends on one's self-effort. Therefore, we always stress the need of constant satsanga and immersion in bhakti and God consciousness. Nature or Prakriti is constantly urging us towards that goal and has boundless patience. Doesn't matter how many embodiments, millions, and yet we continue to circulate. But in this human embodiment, we have this great opportunity to make this our last birth <clears throat> and death. Time is of no consequence. It may take us five years or 5,000 years. Nature presents us with one embodiment after another and with different situations and circumstances until we discard our ignorance and attain enlightenment. That is the journey. For Prakriti or nature, we are the product of a process that has gone on from beginningless time. Thus the word Sanatana Dharma. There is no time stamp. 
we cannot say God created world at this time and in this space. It's all beyond that. So this process can be enhanced or accelerated by sadhana or spiritual discipline. Therefore, all sages and saints, scriptures, everyone asks us to increase our self-effort, to intensify our sadhana. If sadhana is not done, nature still urges us on, but progress is slow because it will take time for us to realize that. In this portion of Srimad Bhagavatam, Kans had been trying for a long time to bring about the destruction of Krishna and Balarama, but had failed each time. After Narada revealed to Kans the secret of Krishna's true identity, the demon king realized why he had repeatedly failed, and he knew that the final confrontation with his destiny was drawing near. This is the stage of spiritual movement in which the spiritual process comes face to face with ignorance or avidya, face to face with the root cause of all suffering. That is the main attachment, ignorance that binds us to the world process. So the events that follow in this portion of Bhagavatam represent in a colorful way various stages leading to the destruction of ignorance and thereby to the attainment of self-realization. <clears throat> Akrura was selected by Kans to bring Krishna to Mathura. Akrur literally means absence of cruelty. Krur means cruel and Akrur absence of opposite of cruel, kind, compassionate. When your soul becomes established in non-violence and discovers its unity with all, we become fit to sustain the divine self within the chariot of our personality. So all this tapasya, sadhana, penance, spiritual work we do is to gain strength so we can absorb that divine energy within us. When Akrura arrived in Raja, he saw the footprints of Krishna with immense delight. Seeing the footprints of God is symbolic of developing divine qualities within our personality. If we develop the quality of lotus-like detachment, we have seen one footprint. If we develop inner contentment, fulfillment and richness symbolized by the barley grain, then we have seen another footprint. If we have been able to control our distracted mind and wandering senses by the ankush or spear of discriminative intellect known as Vivek Shakti, then we have seen another footprint. These unique footprints of God are not located somewhere in the earth. They are located in our very own consciousness. So we have to understand the deeper meaning of these holy scriptures. These are not just historical events. Like Akrur, the soul discovers God or the divine self in the place where cows are milked. Mystically, this refers to the process of deep meditation. Cows refer to the senses and the mind. It is in meditation that one brings out the sweet essence of all the experiences gathered from the mind and senses. Therefore, it is like milking the cows. So whenever we are in satsang, learning spiritual things, we are milking the cows. Upanishads actually call these scriptures as cows and the milking process is where we get the wisdom. Again, like Akrur, the soul steeped in the virtue of non-violence is led to the abode of the divine self in a most nectarine manner. It is led on one side by the hand of Vairagya or dispassion, symbolized by Balram and his resolute will, and on the other hand by the hand of Viveka or discriminative knowledge, symbolized by Krishna. So we will continue this holy journey in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilanand, Om Tatsat.